Hey everybody, it's Lisa Burningham and I am so glad that you're here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this 30 inch three tier tray out of items that I just had in my craft stash. Nothing that I used to make this has been newly purchased. So the tiers that I have right here on my tray are made out of pizza pans and the top tray is made out of a garden container and all of the items that I got were from the Dollar Tree. For this center pole in the middle, I am using a stair spindle that was left over from a project that I did a few months back. I made a breakfast in bed tray and I just cut off the decorative pieces that I used for legs on my breakfast in bed tray. And so I had this leftover piece of spindle that was just straight and tapered and I thought it would be great to be the center point to my tiered tray. In order to attach everything together, I'm going to need to drill some holes to make access points in each of my metal pieces. So I got my drill and a measuring tape and a pencil, and I measured the center of each of my pieces. I made a mark where the center was, and then I got my drill and I drilled a hole right where the mark was in the center. Then I repeated the process on my second pizza pan tray. For my floral container, I flipped it upside down, measured the base, found the center, made a mark, and then drilled a hole completely through. Since my stair spindle was already white, I decided to paint the metal pieces white as well so everything would be cohesive. I got some white chalk spray paint and I took my pieces outside and I gave them a coat of white chalk spray paint. I began painting them upside down first. I painted the spray paint on each piece until it was completely covered and no metal was showing. I let my plates and my container dry for about one hour before flipping them over and painting the front side. Again, I painted the pieces thoroughly until the entire piece was completely saturated in paint. And then I let my pieces dry for about one hour. To give my painted pieces a rustic farmhouse look, I decided to sand down the edges. So I got a piece of light grit sandpaper and I sanded the edge of my pizza trays and my container. I did it lightly. This way it didn't take off too much of the paint, but I still got that weathered look that I was going for. For the feet of my tray, I'm using some wooden blocks that my twin boys have outgrown and they don't play with them anymore, so now it's my turn to play with the blocks. So again, I took these outside and I gave them a coat of paint to make sure that the entire thing was saturated and having these white go along with all the other white pieces so everything is cohesive. My project today is in collaboration with a bunch of other very talented and amazing ladies who are raiding their craft stash right now and coming up with some awesome creations to share with you. The one that put all of us together and the host of this collaboration is Yami, the Latina next door. I just love Yami. She does some really fantastic DIYs on her channel. She's so creative and talented. I'll leave a link to Yami's channel in the description box below, as well as a link to the playlist so that you can check out all of the amazing creations that all of these creators are going to make with items from their craft stash. Now I needed three separate segments from my wooden spindle. I decided to do the bottom piece as a 10 inch segment, the middle as a nine inch segment, and a seven inch segment for the top. I got a measuring tape and a pencil and I measured out the sizes that I needed and I marked it off and then I took my wooden spindle outside and I got my jigsaw and I cut the pieces to the correct size. I just cut right along that pencil line to get my three segments. Now, if you don't have a jigsaw, you could use a handsaw or a hacksaw and that would work as well. 
My spindles also needed to have some access points to them, so I got my drill out again. I lined up the drill bit to the center of the spindle and drilled the hole deep enough to accommodate the screws. If this is the first time that you're visiting my channel, welcome. I'm Lisa. I do DIYs and home decor on my channel. I post weekly videos. I would love to have you join me, so please subscribe. Now that everything is cut, drilled, and painted, it's time to assemble our tray. I'm going to use three screws to assemble everything together. I'll need one wood screw and two dowel screws. Now, the first base layer is going to be put together with that wood screw. I'm going to take that wood screw and I'm going to screw it through the center of my pizza tray directly into the hole that's at the base of my wooden dowel. I'll screw it together and I'll do it really tightly until it's firmly attached. For the middle tray, I'm going to use a dowel screw. This is the screw that has the threads on either end. And I was wondering how am I going to get that into this particular wooden dowel? So I thought, you know, maybe if I take the drill bit out and put that screw into it, that maybe I could screw it in that way. And guess what? It totally worked. So I put it in there. I screwed it down into the center and about halfway. And that way there was still about half of the screw that was poking up. I placed my second pizza tray right on top and then I took my nine inch segment and I twisted it onto the screw that was poking up. I did it until it was really firmly screwed in and everything was nice and snug and stable. I repeated the process with the second dowel screw on my third seven inch segment of wooden spindle. I lined up the screw with the hole in the bottom of my floral container and I pressed that floral container through the screw and then I took that seven inch segment of wooden dowel and I twisted it onto the screw that was poking up through the top of the center of the floral container until it was really snug and securely in place. I was completely out of ideas of what I could use as a decorative topper for my tray until I remembered that I had a box upstairs of some leftover dowels and tie backs and some curtain rod ends and I looked through it and I found this sparkly little gem. Look how pretty that is. And I knew that this would be perfect at the top of my tear tray. And since the wooden spindle already had a hole in the top, it would be perfect for this because this decorative end has a screw at the end and I could just twist it right in, which is what I did. I twisted it on until it was really snug. And I really think that this piece elevates the entire look of the tiered tray. The final step is to add those wooden block feet. So I got some hot glue and I put a dab of hot glue onto the bottom of the tray and I spaced my three blocks out equally at the base to keep the tray even and sturdy. And now my tray is complete and ready to be styled. Now I went with a beach theme for two reasons. Number one, because I love the beach. Who doesn't love the beach? It's so calming and serene. And then number two, because it's what I had on hand. So I had all these beach materials and seashells and everything. And so I knew that they would be a great addition to my tiered tray. I have a wooden box that reminds me of a treasure chest. I have some beautiful turquoise ribbons and some tan ribbons that remind me of the ocean and the beach. I have some shells, of course, you gotta have a whole bunch of shells. And I have some succulents that I put around in various places. And I also have a garland of some driftwood that I got at Ross last year. So I put those in some different places. And then I put a seize the day sign on there. Now I just printed this sign off on my computer. 
I cut it out and I placed it inside of the frame. I love this message of seize the day because Right now, we have a lot of things going on in the world, but each day is a blessing, and I think it's really important that we appreciate each day and really make the most of it. I was able to create this 30-inch, three-tiered, stylish tray with things that I had upstairs in my craft stash. We have a lot of extra time right now on our hands, and I think that if you just rummage through what you have at home, go through your craft stash, pull some things out, and get creative because you all have the potential to make something amazing. Speaking of amazing, don't forget to check out all of the other creators to see what they made with items that they found in their craft stash. And as always, I really appreciate you stopping by and I want to wish you all help, safety, and thank you so much for watching.